Uh, my name is Aaron Collings. I'm a solution architect with uh, with Hewlett Packard, and um, we're going to show Ag Agile Manager today. <clears throat> Before I get started, um, Agile is Agile is uh, expanding its its uh, its realm at many different organizations. There was a study that was done by Forrester, and uh, they asked a number of uh, a number of IT professionals what they're looking to get out of Agile or what they have got out of Agile. These folks are kind of a, a blend of, of people who are looking to adopt it or have recently uh, implemented some form of Agile. So uh, there's a number of benefits that, that organizations are, are looking to achieve from Agile, uh, including improved quality, uh, more opportunities for mid-course corrections, or a tighter alignment with the business and development, more features, more capabilities for your end, uh, your end users or your customers, and so a number of a number of true benefits that uh, that agile is bringing uh, with that of course is uh, is the need to to manage that process and to have it uh, or to achieve all of the particular goals uh, that agile can offer <clears throat> but doing that in a um, in a very constructive and organized way <clears throat> there was also a study that was done and they asked uh, a number of organizations uh, has Agile, have you adopted some form of Agile? And over 40% of companies have adopted Agile. However, of those 40%, uh, only 20% have actually scaled Agile across the enterprise. And there's a, there's a number of reasons behind that. Uh, there's pockets of, of different flavors of Agile and, um, and processes have been consolidated, as well as uh, tools that uh, to manage that uh, the Agile process. So that kind of uh, gives us a, a segue into today, and what I'm going to show uh, everyone here is uh, is our new solution from HP, and it's Agile Manager. And we're going to walk through the process of uh, of, of capturing uh, user stories within within uh, Agile Agile Manager, <clears throat> taking those user stories and, um, and walking through a little bit of a, a day in the life and the demonstration today. Uh, at its core, Agile Manager is a uh, Agile project management solution. Within it, uh, we're able to capture our, our user stories. We also have a full defect management solution within it. We integrate within uh, development environments. Uh, so if, you're, if your developers are using uh, Visual Studio or, or Eclipse, they can look at uh, user stories and tasks directly from within their development environment, and uh, they don't need to open up a, a browser uh, separately. They can be very, uh, very efficient with it. We also integrate with uh, with development uh, or, or build systems and uh, and source source code repositories as well with uh, application lifecycle intelligence and uh, and we'll we'll introduce you guys to that today and kind of dig in a little bit about w what that is what that means. <clears throat> Agile Manager is a software as a service solution. Uh, so as soon as you sign up for the for the service, you, you basically have a working system and a working environment. Uh, we're we're uh, constantly adding in features. We actually uh, use Agile uh, to develop our Agile Manager, and uh, and we're making regular releases. And this is driven by our customer and user feedback. It's a uh, it's a web based uh, interface, and it's. Uh, it's uh, you can have it run on on Mac platform or uh, or Windows platform as well because it's browser based um, and additionally it also integrates in with uh, with ALM or Quality Center so if you're current users of, of ALM or Quality Center and you run projects uh, within within those solution uh, solutions uh, perhaps waterfall projects uh, this also will integrate within those systems as well. The integration that we have within uh, ALM and Quality Center includes being able to synchronize uh, requirements or uh, user stories and tasks and defects as well between the two systems. And that's if, uh, if ALM or Quality Center is either on-premise or as an environment. So just before I start, uh, we're going to go through a little bit of a, a day in the life, if you will, of using Agile Manager. We're going to uh, a user story, and then we're going to walk through assigning that to a particular release, and, uh, and then we'll assign that uh, user story to a team within a sprint, 
and uh, then I'll take the role of a, a team member within that sprint and break the user story down into some tasks, and uh, and then we'll we'll walk through completing uh, portions of those uh, those tasks, and then we'll take a look at uh, uh, dashboarding capabilities within Agile Manager so you can understand exactly where you're at within your project, um, how much time you have left, uh, where you're at. In, in terms of velocity as well. Okay, I'll go ahead and log into our to our Agile Manager instance. Okay. All right, so what we're looking at, we just logged into Agile Manager, and uh, we have a number of tabs here, and these are essentially uh, the way we organize the data and how we can work through the different um, uh, features and life cycle within our, within our project here. I'm actually going to start it off in our product backlog. <clears throat> our product backlog is going to contain uh, a couple of different uh, areas within it. Uh, starting off at high level, we have an area called themes. And we're taking the example with, uh, with this demo that we might be a, an online, uh, online store, uh, maybe similar to, to an Amazon.com. Uh, and then within our store, we're going to have different areas. And these areas of our, of our store might span multiple releases. We might be working within these application areas uh, over time. And so we have, for instance, a music store, a movie store, a billing area, a bookstore. And this is a high level what we call a theme. And then we can go, we can dig a little bit deeper into our themes, and we can go directly into what we call features. And that's the next level in. And then within features, we're getting more granular. So we're in, within our movie area, and we're now uh, looking at, say, a movie database, movie search, movie playback. And as you notice, we've gotten a little bit deeper in here. And then the next area we can go into is called our backlog items. And this will actually be our our, uh, our user stories and, and our, for our requirements for, for, uh, for our different areas or our features within here. So let me go ahead and click into that. And here we have our, our user stories that we've captured uh, for, uh, for this area for our backlog items. Okay. Let me go ahead and create a new user story. I'm just going to provide a name here, and uh, we could also provide a description, uh, something in, in that about a uh, user story. We can also then assign it to a feature, and uh, just because we're in this area, we can uh, uh, we can create our user stories, but we can also allocate it to any other uh, uh, feature area that we have as well. And I'll give it a priority. And we'll provide uh, story points here for the level of effort we anticipate uh, it taking to, uh, to implement this particular user story. Okay. All right, so here's our user story. It's created within our area. And at this point, I'll go ahead and click on it. And then we can uh, provide additional information uh, <clears throat> and working our, our way down. Um, we can actually assign tasks at this point and uh, <clears throat> from this interface here. And I will actually show this uh, through our task board, but I do want to show that uh, you can do a lot of activities in multiple locations for your user stories. Okay, so if you're comfortable adding in tasks based on your user story at this point, you can create them here. You can also create them within our task board, and I'll actually walk through that process here in a moment. Uh, additionally, we can add in acceptance tests. So for uh, instance, we're implementing this, uh, this feature, or this user story, and we want to make sure that it's correctly tested. Uh, so let me actually add in one here, an acceptance test. And at this point, we could actually pass or fail our, uh, our acceptance test. 
I haven't actually run anything here. I'm just creating one, and I'll save it there. And now we have an acceptance test for this. We can also add in attachments for our user story. So if there are uh, uh, diagrams, mockups, uh, wireframes, uh, things of that nature, or um, or files that uh, that help uh, describe this particular user story, we can attach that to our user story. Come back up to the top. Okay, so everything looks good here, and I'll go back to our backlog items. And then at this point, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to rank our uh, our user stories here as a way of prioritizing. And there we've got our uh, our user story ready to go. Okay, so we're we're still within our backlog items, and I've created this user story, but I haven't actually assigned it to any uh, particular release or or sprint within that release. So over on our right hand side here, we have a release that's uh, that's underway, and we can see if I hover over this, we can actually see some information about uh, where it's at in terms of. Uh, of how many user stories have been created and how many defects are being worked on here. And uh, so highlighted in, in green, it's showing the user stories. Highlighted in blue, are showing the defects. And then over here in gray, this is actually represents the amount of remaining work or remaining capacity that is, uh, that is available for this, for this release. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to drop our user story onto this release and then we'll go into our, our user story here, and we'll assign that uh, uh, user story to a particular sprint within it. So we've just navigated from product backlog into our release management, and we're going to take a look at that, uh, that user story that I just dropped in here. Okay, here's our user story. And a little bit of information uh, or a little bit of uh, uh, overview of where we're at. So we're in our, in our release. Up at the top, we're seeing information about what's contained in our release and what's the status of, uh, of say, our defects. We can see uh, what state they're in, how many we have in terms of, of critical, uh, high, medium, and low. And we can see their progress as well, and if they're complete or done, uh, if they're in a new state, if they're in a testing stage, or if they're in progress. Story summary is also showing this, this information about our overall release uh, within here. Okay. Down over on the right-hand side, this is actually broken out uh, by team. So we actually have three teams who are taking part in this release. We have an orange team, a blue team, and a yellow team. Each of these teams have team members associated with them. And we can see uh, the amount of work that they're working on within the sprint uh, or the active sprint that's taking place right now. We can move uh, between sprints as well. So we can see kind of historically very quickly uh, what has been worked on in the past. And we can move forward to, say, our current state as well. OK, so I'm going to take our user story that we created. I'm going to drop it on the orange team as they have uh, remaining capacity. And then let's go into our team. Okay. Here's our user story that we just dropped into there. We're now within a particular team and a particular sprint. We can move between teams. We can move between sprints. Up at the top, we're seeing information about how long, uh, what's our duration left for our sprint timeline. So we have seven working days left. We can also see information about tasks and the stories that are being worked on. And then down here is our user story. <clears throat> we can see team members that are associated with this, uh, with, with this team. And we can also see their, uh, their capacity at a glance as well. Alice has uh, 60 hours of capacity. So let's see so. We can select our different uh, user stories. And then we can see tasks or acceptance tests that are associated with each of these. Up at the top, this is actually a defect, as denoted by a little bit of a different icon there. We can select the ID for it. And we can see that this is linked 
LinkedIn, so we're now within the defect area. And we'll come back to our sprint and backlog. Okay. If I come down to that, uh, that user story that we created, I can select that, and then I can see our acceptance test that we've added in here. At this point, I can drop our user story out onto a, uh, a team member. We've added it to Alex, and we can see that he's now been assigned this, this user story. And then we can go into Task Board. Task Board is going to show us a, a visual representation of our user stories, and we're going to be able to drag or create tasks based off of our user stories and walk them through the different phases of, of being completed. So with, with Agile and, and Scrum, uh, so often you'll take a user story, then break it down to, say, uh, logical or, or uh, chunkable work items, such as tasks, and, uh, and that's actually what, what we're going to do. All right, so let's go down. Um, actually, and before I uh, create tasks based on these user stories, we have filters within here, so we can look at all of the uh, all of the user stories, or we can look at uh, user stories that are just assigned to a particular team member. And if you recall, uh, I believe Alice and uh, another individual, Cecil, didn't have any user stories assigned to them. So we're just looking at Alex's view here. <clears throat> I'll come into our user story here on the left-hand side. And if I right-click on it, we have a number of options uh, to select from. I could uh, add tasks from this user story, and that's actually what we're going to do. Uh, we can also uh, go into a planning phase here where we can uh, assign this to, say, a future sprint or even a future release within here. We could break the story if it uh, made sense uh, that this were, there was two core pieces of functionality here that didn't uh, make sense to have together. We could mark it as complete right away, or we can mark it as blocked as well so that uh, it can be understood that uh, there might be something impeding uh, completion of, of this user story. I'm going to create a task uh, based from this user story. And we'll create a couple of tasks. Stored procedure, a web service. Okay. Uh, I've just provided a, a numbered list here. And uh, by doing that, we can actually create multiple tasks uh, within this one interface. Or I could just save it as a, a single task as well. Um, we can assign it to uh, different individuals within this, uh, within this team. And we can set an estimation uh, in terms of hours for how long uh, it's going to take to complete this, uh, these tasks. I'll go ahead and save it. There we have our tasks that have been generated from our user story. We can start, uh, uh, they're still in a new state or new status. We can start moving them over to, say, in progress. As we're doing that, uh, uh, Alex may be completing this, this work and uh, decreasing the amount of hours left uh, for this, uh, for implementation or for completing this, uh, this task. And then we can see that our status is getting updated as well. We can move them all the way over to completed and walk them through the different stages, if you will. We can also edit them within here or mark as completed. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is our task board within uh, within our team and then within the sprint. Um, the next thing I'd like to show, I'd like to walk through, is our sprint closure. So after um, as we're getting uh, close to, to completing, let's assume that maybe we have one working day left or we're at uh, day zero, and we go into an area what we, what we call sprint closure. Within here, we can see uh, work that was planned or not planned uh, within our, within our uh, sprint. We can see uh, remaining user stories or stories that have been completed, uh, defects that have been fixed. We can capture things that went well 
within our, uh, within our sprint, so things to improve on. We can then save these as uh, items that we call action items. And these are a form of, uh, of user stories as well that you can work with and, uh, and use to uh, better your team and better your processes. <clears throat> Over here on the right, we'll expand out an area here where we can select uh, user stories or defects that haven't been completed uh, in our sprint. We can roll them to the next sprint, or we could plan them for, say, future releases. If I had multiple releases in here, we can assign it to that, or we can assign it to a, a future sprint, or we can assign it to another team as well. Okay. Actually, there's one thing I did want to show. Uh, if we go back to our task board, if you recall, I had an uh, acceptance test uh, for this for this user story, and uh, let me go ahead and drag these over here to mark this user story as complete. And so now we're going. It's asking us uh, if we want to confirm that we're now in a complete or a done state for this uh, for this user story. As I've moved all of our tasks over to our completed area, I'll save that, and then we get a little warning here that asks us. It says you're about to close. Uh, you're about to close out the user story, but you have one acceptance test that has not passed. So it's a it's a form of validating or ensuring that all of your uh, acceptance tests have passed before you move uh, forward. Okay. So next area I want to I'd like to show here is our application lifecycle intelligence summary. And what this is is this is a view into the code and the builds. Uh, that are taking part or that are part of this release. What I mean by that is we can see information about how code changes are related to user stories. And we can see that uh, out of all of the code changes, 68% of the code changes are related to user stories, 7% of code changes, changes are related to defects, and 25% are, are unassigned code changes. Uh, so. So how, how is that beneficial? Well, for, uh, if you take the example that maybe you see all the code changes are, are related to defects, maybe very early in uh, maybe your initial uh, first or second sprint. Well, that might, that might be kind of pretty concerning uh, as opposed to you'd like to have, uh, say, a reversal where you have most of your code changes associated with user stories or new features. So with this information, you can use this to understand if you're, uh, what's your overall level of, of quality and where are the changes uh, occurring and uh, are you adding in new features, new capabilities versus uh, constantly fixing things. So it can give you that, uh, that visibility. You can also see information about your build status. So if we had uh, any failures coming from your build server, uh, we can see that. Uh, we can see uh, from this view uh, in terms of code that's being uh, committed or, or saved into your system, we can see which developers and, uh, and the percentage of code that's being checked in by them. And then we can see uh, the top items, whether they're uh, defects or, or user stories, we can see um, which ones are the most, uh, which ones have the most code changes associated with them. And that might be a way to also uh, go after those or ensure uh, that you only test or that you test uh, very effectively the areas that have the most, most change. Okay. So that's, uh, that's ALI. Uh, the next area that I'd like to show, I'll come into our home page. And this, is our, uh, this is essentially a dashboard here. And we're going to have information here such as uh, uh, burn up, uh, burn down charts, uh, Sprint uh, backlog life cycle. We can also so we can set up these different uh, these different graphs within our dashboard, and um, and we call them widgets. If I select this link here, we have a list of uh, different widgets that we can drop into our into our dashboard page here, such as our release burn up, uh, burn down, um, and different areas. Uh, to manage or to understand exactly where you're at in terms of uh, overall progress and, and status. You can add these into the dashboard, team velocity, 
there. Yeah, that team workload. Once we've set up a, uh, a little dashboard, um, we can then save it as what we call a favorite. And we can save it into, say, a, uh, a public view. So anybody on your team uh, can very quickly select this to understand or see uh, where you're at as based on, say, these roles. For instance, uh, let's take a look at a developer dashboard. Looks like we don't have any items uh, selected in here to configure them. We'd come in and configure the settings. So my defects uh, by severity, if I was a particular developer, I could find the different items there to have it uh, visible by, say, myself. I come down into our release manager, and we can have information uh, that might may be applicable to this particular uh, particular role. And then again, we can save those in these different areas here uh, so that uh, they can be reused. 